Hey everyone, my name is Gabriel. I'm the founder of Shapeflux and also a professional graphic designer and Figma expert. Welcome to my new video. Today we're gonna talk about five essential plugins every designer should have in Figma. Let's get right into it. So the first one I want to point out is Emailify. So uh, this is a little bit specific for people that work with emails, but today is something uh, that's very widespread. Uh, designers work a lot with email design uh, and usually it can be created within the platform, but you can also create uh, directly in Figma, which makes some things easier. Uh, usually because you have your design system there, you have your components, you have your colors, uh, just the typography you're not going to use that much because you, for emails, you have to use typographies that are uh, email supported. But uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about this plugin. I already, I already have an uh, I already have a video on my channel about just about this plugin that I'm, uh, I go a little bit deep on a deep dive on that. If you want to check that out, just go to my channel. But uh, right now I'm just going to go quickly through it. So Emailify is a plugin that allows you to create uh, HTML email designs inside Figma and then export to different platforms like uh, MailChimp, uh, Zoho, Campaigns and other. So uh, how you get started is you just uh, add a new Emailify container here directly through the plugin. So if you're gonna say something like uh, Gabriel party and then what's gonna happen is uh, this frame is gonna contain all the content for the email and that's gonna be exported later through the plugin. So you can see here that they already have a lot of, di of different templates you can use and you can just go move forward with that and select as many templates as you want. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you can sele select as many uh, elements to your, e to your email as you want. So if you want to start like with an alert bar, uh, with a, a promotion, for example, and then you can have uh, different links. Uh, you can even have a, a header with a link to go to your website or to view the email on the browser. Uh, you have all these different elements you can choose from images. So you can set an image like this, and then you can keep going, adding some content, some paragraph, uh, all these different layouts you can choose from, even with like check, bar check marks if you want to do uh, some features of your product or some features of your events, anything you're gonna you want to promote. Then you can also add some uh, some numbers like that, like participants, revenue, anything, any numbers that may be relevant uh, to that email. And then you just keep going, adding uh, other elements as you want. <clears throat> I'm not gonna go like deeply inside each of these elements, but basically uh, you want you can change most of the elements within it. Uh, meaning uh, I can go come here and then change uh, the image that's here, the icon. For example, this is a vector icon, so uh, it uses the names of the layers as uh, the the guidance for what is inside, w what that layer should be on the email. So you you shouldn't be changing too much in terms of uh, the element names and how it can they can come, uh, how they come from the plug plugin. But you can go uh, to like inside the frame and change what's there, and that's gonna be what is going to be e exported later. You can change the color. You can change most things as you would on a Figma file, on a Figma design. Uh, but what you're gonna do here differently is, uh, yeah, so just finalizing the email. And then, uh, so uh, one thing that you have to note is each of these kinds of elements uh, have settings. So you can see, for example, this, this one is a row layer uh, and we can edit a little bit of the settings in terms of uh, how the columns should should behave on mobile or on desktop. Uh, you should always try to keep like uh, the few element, uh, uh, the width of the elements on few. 
so that it, it gets responsive depending on the device that's opening the email and yeah and you have all those different settings even for dark mode override so if, if you want to experiment a little bit on that you can have different colors for your background or for your text depending on if the device is using a dark mode override so yeah you can you can see that all these different elements that i click i have these uh different settings for it so if it's text you're gonna have settings like font size for mobile, uh, letter spacing, paragraph spacing. So you can really customize the email design as you wish. Uh, and for images and for some other elements, you can also add a clickable link URL. So that would be like for buttons, for example. So we didn't add any button here, but I can add something like this here. And that would be kind of the CTA of the email. And then you can just select the button layer and go here to the settings. And you're going to see you can add uh, the clickable link. You can even play around with some uh, effects like a button hover that's going to work on a few different email providers, but not all. Uh, like full width of mo button on mobile. That's something that you're probably going to want to standardize throughout your branding uh, and, <clears throat> and contents. For the email so this would be like most everything you need to do uh here before you export and actually use this as a, your email so you can also see that if, if you go to footer you're gonna be able to see the the email campaigns and marketing providers that uh work great with the with this plugin so active campaign uh yeah blue shift campaign monitor constant contact so all of these should work great if you just add this footer because you're supposed to add a footer with this information to be compliant with the regulations so uh, if you're if you're gonna use this on hubspot for example you can just click hubspot here and you're gonna have your footer uh, specifically for that platform that's very good as well you can see that we have a lot of different options or you can even just do a footer yourself and then just edit the the links and custom codes in there yeah so you even have like signatures so on so that's yeah i'm gonna pause here for this uh plugin we're getting uh very long on this one but you can just basically click export html here and then you're gonna see that we have some different uh types of download you can do so you can download like html email which is usually what you're gonna do if it's an html email signature you have that there as well or a pre pdf preview uh or just a source code that that, that should work as well uh and then you can also do the platform integrations here so let's say you you're gonna integrate with hubspot we can you can integrate directly to an api key here and this is gonna create a campaign in HubSpot directly from Figma. So that's that's very useful and interesting. Uh, if you wanna streamline your, streamline your uh, email design uh, platforms, you can do everything through Figma without even having to open HubSpot to create the, the design. Yeah, and then you're just gonna add your subject line here. Uh, yeah, and then you're gonna Yes, because we don't have the connection to HubSpot here, I'm just gonna go back to HTML email, and then I always keep this option open, uh, turned on as well, uh, so that the images keep hosted uh, once you send the the email, uh, and then you just click export to HTML, and you're gonna get the email HTML with all the assets that's used on it, uh, everything you need. You're just gonna download here. You're gonna upload to your platform uh to your marketing platform and then that's going to be everything you need to do for that then you're going to have a, a responsive ready to go email on your platform the second plugin that we're going to go to is photo pa so i have a video about this one as well uh but i'm going to show you real quick but basically uh probably if you're a designer and you work with like photos or uh anything that needs any kind of uh, professional touch, uh, you can go to, you need to go to Photoshop in order to, in order to edit uh, the images that you're using. If you wanna add more complex uh, effects or uh, grains or different uh, image treatment to, the, to your photo, uh, like masks and stuff like that. So if you need these more advanced, uh the idea would be to go to photo p so we can talk about pixels and photo p at the same time as we can save some time but basically pixels is the third one that i want to show uh 
and all it does is get you an image uh, from stock footage for your project real quick real fast you can just open and click insert random image that's gonna insert a random image for you here and then like that's everything you need to do on pexels you can export uh, these images like this you can see the history of images you already exported so very cool uh, and then let's use this image for the photo p show so i'm gonna show you a uh, photo p selected with that image and what's gonna be doing is uh, you don't have to leave figma to add uh, complex effects to your image so here you're gonna basically have a photoshop inside your uh, figma so here for example i would be able to just duplicate this background and i'll have two layers here that i can play with uh, can add like diff different uh, multipliers uh, or different overlays here to the top one. Uh, yeah, you can see like opacity, just like photo you would do on Photoshop. Uh, and then what I can do is just go here to image. Uh, as you can see, we can change the mode from RGB to uh, CMYK, which is the printing color scheme. Uh, and like, this is very useful you, if you can export as, if you want to export something to print this is the way to go uh, you can also do uh, adjustments very uh, advanced figma doesn't have most of these options uh, so like you can just go and do some po posterize then we can also go to like, the filters and like add, add distortions like kaleidoscope angle and yeah it's a lot i'm not gonna go through all of that but but you see that it's very advanced and you can even vectorize the images here it's all free uh and then yeah i'm just i'm not gonna go through all the features you have but basically you can add all kinds of effects uh filters blurs masks and uh removing yeah like transforming into a vector or smart object so yeah you can do a lot i really recommend this plugin as it's free and you have all those different elements so like the the want to select the elements uh magic one uh and you can go through all of these and see a lot of different tools you don't have in fig so like the healing tool is very very key for when editing and this is something you're gonna have here so really recommend it and now let's go to the fourth and five fifth plugin that we're gonna go through on this video uh this one is print for figma so let's say you want to print something like a, a banner or a flyer. What you're going to do is you're going to see here uh, a letter format, for example, which is very standard, which is 8.5 uh, width by 11 height. And what you get with this is you're going to get the pixels for, for that in Figma because Usually uh, Figma doesn't show you uh, the size of the frames in real size. That's just in, in pixels that vary in size. So this plugin allows you to just create uh, a letter size document. And this is gonna allow you to design inside the right space for then, if you wanna print this, you can just export as, P as PDF and it's gonna be already with the right size. So that's very useful. If you wanna print something and you need to have like the exact size inside Figma to design it and then export, it's the best way to go at this point. You don't need to do any kind of uh, calculation or anything. You just click come here and export and then you're gonna get the size. You have different uh, sizes here or, or you can set your size custom uh, your custom size here on the side you can even add margins bleed and crop marks uh, so those are very useful for printing and then the final one is random shapes i have a video on my instagram i think showing you a little bit about this plugin but uh very useful if you want to do for example uh, a social media post for your brand you're gonna have something like this and then you have your text you have your image and then you just want to give it a little bit more uh, a little bit more complexity uh, some different elements you can use as masks uh, and actually just to uh, decorate it a little bit so this is an example I just generated a random super shape and then like we can just use a super shape like this then we cre can create a polygon and we can also like keep 
changing the count so you can generate more than once at the same time more than one at, uh, at once so you can see here that we have these different elements that are polygons and then you can just keep going to blob so basically you're gonna have like all these different elements uh and shapes that you can use on your graphic to make it more interesting and more compelling and then yeah, they also have the waves so yeah you can just keep on creating different elements uh and that's gonna really help you to create random shapes that are unique to use on your graphics and on your, on your designs. Uh, so these are the five plugins that we went through today. Uh, I really hope that you found this interesting. Uh, if you need any help implementing design systems, brand identity, websites, UX or app development, you can just check the links in the description and we're gonna have more information to you on how we can how you can contact us and, and get all this information on uh, how how we can help you improve your digital presence uh, hope you like this video let me know in the comments uh, if this is useful for you share with a friend so we can get this to more people and everyone can know about these cool plugins and follow us and give it a thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks. Bye-bye.